talking to you about Germany. That is a concept that many of you may have failed to understand. Let me tell you that in Germany there still remains the spirit of unity and the spirit of strength. Let me tell you that here we have a united who are modest in their wishes. They are not imperialists. They don't want to take what doesn't belong to them. All they want is to live their own simple lives, undisturbed by outside influences. That is the Germany that we know. I can remember when I cast my memory back to 1932 and 1931. I can remember how everything that could be done to stimulate the hatred of England against Germany was done. I remember how my old friend said, what shall we do with this man Hitler? He wants Poland. He wants Czechoslovakia. What shall we do if he wants more than that? Now, it does behove you to think at the moment how much Stalin has taken and how much Stalin wishes. I ask you to remember that in 1939, in August, the only question was that of bringing Danzig back to the Reich. No more and no less. What a small problem that was in comparison with those that confront us today. Surely, if only we had had the common sense to agree that the German people of Danzig should go back to the Reich, then we might have had peace. We might have avoided all the terrible sacrifices of the last five and a half years. We might have avoided the hatred, which can only be very gradually repaired. Now I say to you, my English listeners, the trouble is this. Germany, if you like, is not anymore the chief factor in Europe. Germany may be, I may be wrong, I will only say that the German arms have been in many battlefields defeated. But I ask you, how could it ever be possible? for England to maintain a front against Soviet Russia unless she had the help of the German Legion. That is a question which may perhaps be debated and discussed ad infinitum. I cannot promise that I can give any solution to it tonight. I can only say that if Germany and England together had decided to preserve the welfare of this continent, then I should have hope. Then I should be happy. An optimist. 
But so far as I can see, the policy of England has been to allow Germany to sacrifice her very last, the ultimate end of her resources, in an attempt to stay the Bolshevik attack. If I am right, then I can only say that the people of Britain deserve what they get in the future. I speak now personally. I want to talk to you of what I know and what I feel. I have always hoped and believed in the last resort, there would be an alliance, a combine, an understanding between England and... Well, at the moment, that seems impossible. Good. If it cannot be, then I can only say that the whole of my work has been in vain. I can only say that I have day in and day out called the attention of the British people to the menace from the East which confronted them. And if they will not hear if they are determined not to hear, then I can only say that the fate which overcomes them in the end will be the fate that they have measured. For I cannot say. Well, now this evening we have to discuss rather a difficult question that of Poland. I know that many of you are sick and tired of the name, but still, when we look back upon the past five or six years, we cannot help remembering that Poland was the pretext for the declaration of war on Germany. The Western Allies said, Poland is in danger. Therefore, we must take up arms. I hope that in these days, five and a half or six years after, we have not completely forgotten that challenge. Of course, much has happened in the meantime. I am willing to grant you with regard to the Baltic states and Poland and the Balkans. Churchill has given away everything that could be given away. That I grant you, but still I believe that in the ordinary British mind, there will continue the belief that if any one power dominates Europe, there can be no peace, there can be no security for Britain. And today the position is that the German Wehrmacht stands between the Soviet hordes and the British Army. If the Wehrmacht were to give up, if the resistance were to finish, then I can only say that you, the British people, would have to make your own terms with the Bolsheviks. And what sorry terms there would be. I don't want to predict. I will not enter into discussion. The San Francisco conference alone shows 
how little you have to expect from the Bolsheviks. And therefore, in conclusion, I would only say, just make sure that the end of this world war is not the beginning of a greater world war than you have ever imagined to be possible. Now, in this the most serious time of our modern age, I beg you to realize the fight is on. You have heard something about the Battle of Berlin. You know that there a tremendous world-shattering conflict is being made. Good. I was going to say men who have died in the Battle of Berlin have given their lives to show that whatever else happens, Germany will live. No coercion, no oppression, no measures of tyranny that any foreign foe can introduce will shatter Germany. Germany will live. people of Germany have in them the secret of life, endurance, will, and purpose. And therefore I say to you, in these last words, you may not hear from me again for a few months. I say, es lebe Deutschland. I have it. And farewell.